Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to start a new series on the Dell PowerEdge R540 server. In this video we're going to specifically focus on CPUs, but in the series as a whole we're going to cover memory, CPUs, hard drives, solid state drives, uh, how to install VMware, how to install uh, an OS, how to create virtual machines, uh, plus a ton more. So click that like, smash that subscribe. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R540 server. Let's go ahead and hop in. This video is going to be specifically focused on CPUs. There are two CPU sockets for the R540. It's an LGA3647 socket, which means it takes Intel Xeon first and second gen scalable procs. So that's going to be your uh, silvers, which are 4100, 4200, uh, your golds, which are going to be 5100, 5200, 6100, and 6200, and then your platinums, which are 8100 and 8200. So those are all the different series. Uh, that will work and are compatible with the R540 server. People ask us all the time, hey, what CPUs do you recommend? And really, it kind of depends on what your application is and what you're looking to do and what your budget is, of course. So uh, we've broken it down into three categories. So we have our low-end, our value, and our high-end CPUs. So depending on what you're looking for, hopefully one of these CPUs will fit your needs. And of course, when you go to our website to configure your server, uh, there's a ton of different options on there outside of these, but these are just some of the ones that we do recommend. So on the low-end, those are going to be silver procs. So that's going to be your Intel Silver 4110, your four, uh, Intel Silver 4114, and 4116. So those are the three procs that we recommend on the low end side, which is going to be a 2.1, 2.2, and 2.1 gigahertz. And that's going to be 8 core, 10 core, 12 core. Uh, given that the 12 core for the uh, 4116, I personally like that one a lot, but we build with 4110s all the time for customers that just want uh, a nice, cheap, low end proc that you can throw in. So now we're going to move to our value procs, and there's three value procs that we recommend as well, and that's going to move us to the Intel first gen scalable gold procs. So that's going to be the 6126, the 6132, and the 6142. All three of these procs are great budget procs that uh, aren't going to break the bank, and they're going to have a higher performance than the silvers that we just mentioned. They're going to cost a little bit more, but they're not going to be something that's uh, overly expensive uh, like the high-end ones that we're about to mention. Um, so on these, you're going to get uh, all three of them are going to be 2.6 gigahertz, and it's going to be 12 core. 14 core and 16 core and again all three of these are great uh, value procs uh, that we build with all the time all right so that brings us to the high-end procs which are going to be much more expensive overall and there's three of them that we recommend it's going to be the intel gold 6242r the intel gold 6248r and the intel platinum 8268 and all three of these are going to be uh, much more expensive you're talking currently right now thousands of dollars per processor. In the future, I'm sure that's going to come down, but right now they're just at a really, really high price point overall. And that's going to be um, 3.1, 3.0, and uh, 2.9 uh, for your speeds. And it's going to be uh, 20 core, 24 core, and 24 core. And again, uh, when you pop two of these in, you're talking about getting you know, 48 cores in a box. And that's why it's so expensive. Uh, but in the future, let's hope that that does come down. So all right, now that we know a little bit more about some of the procs that we recommend, some of the different procs that are compatible, uh, we're going to go ahead and show you how to uh, remove your old CPU properly, uh, which is everything from making sure that you just don't get thermal grease everywhere, how to properly pull it out, and all the steps in between. And then we're going to install an upgrade um, and put a new CPU in and, and put on the thermal uh, paste and everything in between. So we're just going to show you kind of the whole upgrade process for the CPUs. Before we do that, I'm going to grab my ESD gear and be right back. All right, now that I have my ESD gear on, we are safe to work inside the machine. So all right, uh, I always like to lay out everything that we're gonna need for this upgrade. So you will need a screwdriver, but not any type of screwdriver. You will notice this is a star bit. This is not gonna be your regular Phillips head in here. It's not gonna be a flat head. So make sure that you have a star bit before you are able to take off the heat sink. We are going to need a rag because we're gonna need to clean the uh, old thermal paste off of the bottom of your heat sink and to potentially just clean the the, um, the old CPU as well. Then we're going to need the CPUs we're upgrading. So we're taking out a silver and we're putting in a gold. So we're going to need the new CPUs. And then we're going to need the thermal paste to put onto the CPUs to make sure that we keep it nice and cool. So, all right, let's go ahead and let's hop in. So first things first, just pop the latch. Very simple, like any server you've been in before. All right, so you will notice on the air baffle or the air shroud, it labels right here CPU 1 and CPU 2. Now, it's technically on the motherboard itself, but just in case you were wondering and you're only putting in one CPU, you'd want to put it in this first one up here. So in order to access the CPUs, we're going to need to remove the riser. So we're just going to lift this straight up. And we're going to toss this to the side, gently, of course. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, 
lift our air baffle up and it's just going to come straight up. So just go ahead and lift it straight up and we're going to put this to the side as well. And so as we noted, CPU1 is up here and CPU2 is over here. Uh, technically again, it's labeled on the motherboard um, and it's labeled uh, on the heat sink itself. So this, the heat sink actually says one and uh, two back here. So it's, it's in a couple of different places to help you find it, but just in case. Uh, so as we noted, uh, CPU1, the heat sink is going to be different on the first one than the second one. So uh, if you check it out, this is going to be a little bit bigger and beefier uh, than the one back here. I'm um, not really sure why they did it that way, but they did it that way. So uh, if you go to buy a heat sink at home because you're going to upgrade your second one, make sure you get the, the proper heat sink because it's really easy to order the wrong one. So that's one tip I'll throw out there for people that uh, is a common mistake uh, that people will make because they just you know think the heat sinks are the same because normally they are in most machines. The heat sinks are the exact same. So um, all right, and you'll notice that CPU one also controls ten dim slots and CPU2 controls six dim slots but it, as we'll discuss uh, in our uh, our memory video the channels are actually the same there's six on both CPUs so uh, there's some just wonkiness that's a, that's a little funky overall to this um, to this server but uh, it is what it is it's uh, it's a great system and it's just a, a little bit of a strange setup when it comes to uh, the CPUs and the RAM as far as uh, the, the channels and how many dims per CPU it's just a little funny so, but anyhow, so what we're going to do in order to remove the CPU is honestly really simple. It's uh, very similar to any other one you've been in before. You're going to take your, uh, your screwdriver, we're going to remove the two screws, and in this case, we're going to push these two blue tabs in, and we're going to lift the CPU up. And one thing that's different about the 14th gen compared to uh, the 13th gen is on the, uh, the, the heat sink on the bottom of it, there's going to be a clip, and you're going to actually take out the CPU when you lift up the, uh, the heat sink. It's not in there under uh, like a bracket, like the old ones where you'd have to push two levers and kind of push them to the side, and the bracket would come up, and then you'd pull it out uh, physically. In this case, when you lift it up, it's all going to come out, and we're going to show you right now. Uh, so let's go ahead and just hop in. So we'll go ahead and uh, start under doing the screw. Personally, I always like manual screws uh, just because it you can really get a good feel for uh, the screw coming up off of the uh, the motherboard. So that's just my personal preference. All right, so the, the uh, heat sink is actually loose right now. So what we're going to do is push these two tabs in and get it up. All right, there we go. We're just going to lift straight up. And as I mentioned, when you lift this up, the clip right here is going to take the processor out of the socket, which is pretty cool. I like that because in this case, there's uh, what 3,647 uh, 3, pins. That is a lot of pins down there. Uh, to get that on perfectly without accidentally damaging uh, pins with your hands uh, would lead to a bunch of technicians uh, accidentally uh, damaging pins. So I really am a big fan of this clip as a whole because it definitely makes it a lot easier to install and take out the CPU. So now how do I actually take the CPU out here? So uh, the easiest way to do it, and, and you can do it a couple different ways. You can technically remove the clip first or you can remove the CPU first. I like to remove the, uh, the clip because it makes it a little bit easier to uh, maneuver with the CPU. If I try to pull this out right now, they're just really stiff. So what I like to do personally is you come back here and you see all the, the little black clips in the four spots right here. The, that is how it's hanging on. So every once in a while, it will be a pain in the butt like it is right now and it'll get stuck. Uh, so essentially what you need to do is there's actually a release lever over here where you can take your flathead and you don't always have to do this. And most time, honestly, when we're doing this, we don't have to, but you do run into this. You just simply up, just pop it up like that, and you see it was nice and easy, and now it's going to come up. Uh, again, kind of a strange design, but I am a huge fan of these clips as a whole uh, because it does make it a lot easier, and honestly, what's most important here is not damaging the pins. So we're going to go ahead and finish this up right now. So we got uh, th those two sides out. We got this third side out. So now we got to be careful with this last one, and it's everything's officially separated. Uh, so we, the reason we have our rag is we need to clean this before we put our next CPU on. So we'll go ahead and put this to the side. Um, and then I like to clean the actual clip itself. So you'll see there's just some thermal pastes on. They're not a big deal. Um, sometimes it'll just be like a mess. And the reason I like to do it is because the old thermal paste uh, can flake off. And again, we're just trying to protect the pins. So I will off screen and not on top of the, uh, the motherboard. I'll actually clean this uh, just before we uh, install the next one. So we're gonna go ahead and do that right now. All right, so we have this nice and clean, so this is good to go. So I'm going to set this back to the side. Uh, before I actually clean the uh, the clip, 
I want to just show you real quick in order to get this off there's uh, the CPU off there's these two points right here and really when you get one of them it'll just pop out and it's easy to, uh, to slide off and it just comes out and you're nice and loose and you can put the CPU into your tray over here and I'll clean the CPU later but I am like I said going to go ahead and clean the clip right now so that way when we install uh, the next CPU and this stuff actually doesn't look like the thermal paste is very old uh, but sometimes the thermal paste is really old and it'll just flake off and again I'm just trying to protect the machine that's my goal here is just to make sure everything's nice and safe so it's not perfect but you can see it's a little bit better so alright so now we're going to install our gold so uh, one of the questions we get all the time is how do I know which way uh, do I install the uh, the CPU great question right so um, on the CPU itself and this is going to be a trend that you're going to notice over the next minute or two here. There is a gold triangle right here. And this triangle is on the motherboard, it's on the heat sink, and it's on the clip. So on the clip right here, it's a, uh, a triangle that's kind of carved out. So you want to line the triangles up, which essentially means we are going to install it in this direction. So we will go ahead and put it under this clip. And then now we're going to put it under this clip over here. So it is latched on right now. So if I were to, so if I were to flip this over, it's fully in there. And I always like to do that with my hand under it, just in case it's not. But I'll, I like to do that first, just to make sure it's fully on there. So it's all good. So now we're going to need to put this into the heat sink. And you go, okay, well, how do I line up the heat sink? So again, it goes back to the triangle. And on the heat sink, there is a triangle right there so we're going to line it up this direction so we're going to go ahead and install it onto the heat sink so we're just going to line everything up nice and proper so you'll see it just went in you sometimes might have to push a little bit hard on some of them but in this case it went in pretty easy and it's uh, latched in so now I'm going to, I'm going to flip it over as a test with make sure I'm uh, safe and again you got to be careful with all the capacitors here but we flip it over everything's in good so now again how do we install the heat sink you line it up the triangle so that's kind of the overarching theme and the triangles over here in this case so we are going to go ahead and flip it around and you're going to line up the two blue and the two pegs so we're going to go ahead and do it this way so I can push this down and now everything is fully and firmly and I kind of like to move it just to be a little bit safe everything is fully in there and it is perfect and good to go so now we've officially done our upgrade uh, it was really honestly nice and easy um, sometimes it looks a little bit complicated if it's the first time you've done the uh, the clip method but really it's uh, it's a very simple upgrade overall and it's easy to do so again if this is something that you're doing for a home lab or you're new to your data center uh, this is not a hard process and it's something that you will definitely be able to do so uh, first of all thanks for stopping by if you it this far hey click that like smash that subscribe and uh, if you're looking for any uh, upgrades for memory cpus ssds uh, just spare parts as a whole if you want a custom built server we do new and used dell hpe super micro ibm cisco we do amd ryzen's amd epics we do e3s e5s e2100 e2200 e2300 amd uh, or intel scalable uh, e5s i mean we, we kind of do the whole life cycle uh, and we'd love the opportunity to earn your business so please email us at sales at cloudninjas.com that's sales at cloudninjas.com and thanks again for stopping by take care guys